Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will discuss cephalic disorders in newborns. Cephalic disorders affect the brain and the growth of the skull. These disorders begin during pregnancy early in a baby's development. Cephalic disorders may range from mild to severe. This depends on the parts of the brain and the central nervous system affected. Now, these disorders can cause a variety of developmental delays, physical disabilities, and threat to a child life. Now I will briefly discuss different types of cephalic disorders. The first condition is anencephaly. This condition occurs when the top of the neural tube doesn't close as the baby develops during pregnancy. This often results in a baby being born without forebrain and cerebrum. Now forebrain is the front part of the brain and the cerebrum is the thinking and coordinating part of the brain. The remaining parts of the brain are often not covered by bone or skin. These babies are born unconscious, deaf and blind. These babies often die within hours or days of birth. Second type is colpocephaly. Now you know that occipital horns are the posterior or the rear portion of the lateral ventricles which are the cavities of the brain. Now in colpocephaly which is a congenital brain abnormality, the occipital horns are larger than normal because white matter in the posterior cerebrum has failed to develop or thicken. It is characterized by microcephaly which is an abnormally small head and impaired intellect. Other features may include movement abnormalities, muscle spasm and seizures. Now colpocephaly result from some kind of disturbance in the fetal environment that occurs between the second and six months of pregnancy. Now next is the holoprosencephaly. It is the failure of the prosencephalon or the forebrain to develop normally. Now the forebrain is a region of the brain in the fetus that develops into part of the adult brain including the cerebral cortex. Instead of the normal complete separation of the left and right half of the forebrain, there is an abnormal continuity between the two sides. There are different grades of severity. A baby may have very mild abnormalities and be able to lead a relatively normal life or there may be severe abnormalities and limited function. Many babies with the severe form of this disorder die before or soon after birth. Others may live but may have severely deformed faces and severe cognitive and neurological impairment. Next type is anencephaly. It is a rare birth defect which is caused by improper closure of the neural tube during fetal development. Now neural tube is a part of human embryo that becomes the brain and the spinal cord. The defect results in extreme retroflexion that is backward bending of the head combined with severe distortion of the spine. In most infants, neck is absent and the skin of the face is connected directly to the skin of the chest, while scalp is directly connected to the skin of the back. There are also severe spinal defects. Now in anencephaly, the baby's distorted body may also put the mother's life in danger. Babies with this disorder rarely live more than a few hours. Another important type is hydrencephaly. It is a rare condition in which the brain cerebral hemisphere are absent and replaced by sacs which are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. An infant with hydrencephaly may appear normal at birth. The head size and spontaneous reflexes such as sucking, swallowing, crying, moving the arms and legs all seem normal. However, after a few weeks, the infant usually become irritable and has increased muscle tone. After a few months of life, seizures and hydrocephalus may develop. Hydrocephalus means excessive accumulation of the cerebrospinal fluid in the brain. Now other symptoms of hydrencephaly may include visual impairment, lack of growth, deafness, blindness, spastic quadriparesis or paralysis and intellectual deficit. Next important type is lysencephaly which means smooth brain. It is a spectrum of severe and rare brain malformation that affect unborn babies in the womb. Gyri are the folds or bumps in your brain and sulci are the indentation or the grooves. In lysencephaly, the lack of normal development of the brain gyri and sulci makes an affected baby's brain appear smooth and an extremely small head. Now gyri and sulci are important because they separate brain regions and increase your brain surface area and cognitive ability. Lysencephaly can occur on its own which is known as isolated lysencephaly or is a part of certain syndromes such as Miller-Dicker syndrome and Walker-Warburg syndrome. 
Now, children with license safely often have significant developmental delays and mental disabilities. But these may vary from child to child depending on the severity of the condition. Another type is Macron cephaly or Magellan cephaly. Now it is characterized by brain overgrowth secondary to increased size or the number of neurons and glia. In this brain size is significantly larger than normal. The condition is sometimes present at birth but it sometimes develops later in the childhood due to an underlying disorder. Children may have seizures, developmental delays and other motor problems. Now, Macron cephaly often is associated with other disorders including achondroplasia, Beckwith-Weidman syndrome, neurofibromatosis, or tuberous sclerosis. Next type of cephalic disorder is Boren cephaly. This disorder occurs when a pocket of cerebrospinal fluid forms in the baby's brain during development. It is believed to be related to an infection or stroke either during pregnancy or the newborn stage. Some children with this disorder have normal intelligence and few if any developmental problems. Others may have motor or cognitive difficulties of varying degrees. So the severity depends on the size of the cerebrospinal fluid filled pockets and where they are in the brain. Next type of cephalic disorder is Schizencephaly. Now this rare disorder happens when slits or clefts form in one or both hemisphere of the brain. Symptoms will vary depending on how many clefts a child has and if they are on one or both sides of the brain. Some people with this disorder lead relatively normal lives. Others may have severe developmental delays, motor delays or even paralysis or seizures. Now I will like to discuss hydrocephalus. It is not really a cephalic disorder but it can cause a large head size in infants. Hydrocephalus is the buildup of fluid in the cavities or the ventricles which are located deep within the brain. The excess fluid increases the size of the ventricle and put pressure on the brain. The cerebrospinal fluid normally flows through the ventricles and bath the brain and the spinal column. But the pressure of too much cerebrospinal fluid associated with this hydrocephalus can damage brain tissue and cause a range of brain function problems. Now children usually need a tube or shunt to drain the excess fluid. The outcome depends on the cause of the hydrocephalus and how early therapy is started. Now here I will also like to discuss microcephaly. It is a condition where a baby has head size much smaller compared with other babies of the same age and sex. Now head size is an important measurement to monitor a child's brain's growth. Now the severity of microcephaly ranges from mild to severe. It can be present at birth which is known as congenital microcephaly or it may develop postnatally where it is known as acquired microcephaly. Now this condition is common in many known disorders such as Down syndrome. Many children with microcephaly may have an intellectual disability as well as cerebral palsy, sensory disorders including vision problems, poor motor skills, lack of balance and coordination and trouble thinking and learning as expected for the child's age. Microcephaly is also a symptoms of other birth defects such as lysencephaly and porencephaly. Now the symptoms of cephalic disorders. Symptoms may vary depending on the types of cephalic disorder but may include unusually large or small head, trouble solving or eating, poor muscle tone, paralysis, seizures, deformed fingers or toes, deformed face, delays in the development of physical abilities or language, and delayed growth. Now the treatment. Treatment for cephalic disorder depends on the type of the disorder, but it may include physical therapy for the motion, speech therapy for language, medicines such as anti-seizure drugs, shunts to drain the excess fluid of the brain, surgery to help correct a deformed skull or the face, and the comfort care. Now the prevention of cephalic disorder. The true cause of cephalic disorder is not fully known. Experts believe that genes may be a factor. Things that happen during a woman's pregnancy may also play a role. These can include having an infection or being exposed to toxic chemicals. Now the best way to try to prevent cephalic disorder is to be as healthy as possible during pregnancy. This means staying away from alcohol, cigarettes and illegal drugs. It is also important to eat a varied healthy diet. Getting enough folic acid has been shown to reduce the risk of certain birth defects, including some cephalic disorders. 
but many women take good care of themselves during pregnancy and still give birth to a child with a cephalic disorder. Some of these disorders may be caused by an unidentified intrauterine infection or an injury. Hereditary conditions may also be a factor. So genetic counseling may help you understand your risk in future pregnancies. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel.